Hi everyone, welcome. As you can see, my European Nightcrawler systems have been placed into the corner here, not because they were bad, it's only because my new stuff that is usually positioned off to the right, as it gets older and older, works its way over onto the shelving system, which is where I keep all my more mature, close to being finished systems. So these two systems here are the ones where we had done a little test of composting t-shirts. So those t-shirts are pretty much gone at this point. The only thing that remains of those t-shirts is remains, basically what I refer to here on this board as remains. And the only remains that I'm referring to are just the synthetic threads that were used to stitch the shirts together. All the actual cotton fabric that the shirts were made up, up of was eaten away by the worms and the helper creatures living in the system with the worms. So we figured we'd take one last look at this stuff. Maybe we'll take a look at it on the bench over there. And then that stuff's going in the trash. We have no further use for it. So we're going to get these two bins up on the bench. I've got some yummy foods for them. And we're going to get started. So let's get to work. So really quick, before we get down and dirty into the bins, let me just recap some of the stuff you saw a moment ago. The, uh, the systems here, they're both 192 days of age. And they were fed 17 times so far, getting feeding number 18 today. And it was 10 days ago that we last checked in on them. So hopefully we'll um, find not too many leftovers, but we'll see. So really quick, just before we dispense with this and allow this stuff here to make its final appearance on camera, this is the, uh, the threads. And basically, I didn't really have to go to much effort to separate these from one another because each one of these is sort of a separate item and you know something I'm doing here now is something I've not yet done which is to try to um, better understand how all this ties together so I'm assuming that this is going to be one of the sleeves and then the stitching that goes up your shoulder up to the presumably the neck but that doesn't make sense right because the neck must be here Perhaps this would be the right place to start. So the neck would probably, well, it broke. So I'm not even sure. I'm getting a little disoriented here. <laughs> I'm also assuming there's got to be a portion that goes around the bottom, that goes around your waist, so to speak. And then maybe up and down one of the sides, someplace where they actually sew the fabric into sort of the tube that goes around your torso. So I don't know, maybe this is a puzzle that I'm not going to be able to solve here in real time on camera. But I've not really gone to the effort of trying to spread this stuff out to get a better look at it. But what the heck, this might be our last chance because I believe that this stuff is simply going to be heading to the trash at this point. So I mean every time I see a loop that's about this size I assume this has to be one of the sleeves. Well here I am trying to figure it out again. <laughs> Up here, I don't know exactly what I'm looking at, but I'm thinking that it's not the neck because the tag is all the way over here somewhere. But whatever, it's not so important. Perhaps the stitching sort of goes up one arm, down the side, perhaps around the bottom, and then maybe back up again or somewhere connects into the other side and the neck and stuff. So. One way or another, I'm sure this all makes sense and perhaps somebody that knows exactly how garments are assembled would be able to better deconstruct it, but I don't think there's a whole lot more to be seen here. So why don't we just go ahead and do away with this and proceed with feeding our little wormy friends here. The assortment of foods they're getting is just a whole variety of different stuff out of my freezer. I think I see some cucumber peel in here. I think I've got the leaves of radishes. Even here is a little piece of radish. There's orange peel or clementine or some sort of small thing. This I recognize as the inside of an apple or a pear or something like that. I even see strawberry bits over here. So I do have sort of a mishmash of various different things for them here today. So hopefully they enjoy that. Let's get to feeding. The, uh, the feeding last time was delivered in such a way that the food was all bundled into little packages before being put into the system. So I kind of laid out a number of pieces of newspaper, a couple pieces of soiled napkin and paper towel, and then, I, and then I wrapped all the food that I gave them into those pieces of paper. And then we 
place them down into the feeding zone. And then at the end, we also use these two brand new, well, not two, four actually, four brand new pieces of newspaper to cover up with at the end. I wondered how far along this stuff would get. It also seems like we use some nice brand new uh, coffee filters as feeding zone indicators here as well. So perhaps all this stuff can actually go in as supplementary bedding with today's feeding rather than getting sort of boring, sterile stuff. Maybe we can give them some nice broken in seasoned bedding type materials to accompany their feeding. So I do see some leftovers from feedings gone by. These interesting little rings, here's one that's a little easier to see, or little pieces of corn cob that I chopped up. Here I believe I see a stem of a banana. This is just some sort of a stick. <laughs> and, um, and I kind of thought that perhaps today we can try to just blend stuff together. This is an actual piece of corn cob, which wasn't really cut up into little discs like these. Usually when you open one of these things up, there's worms inside. In this case, I don't see that happening. So here's some more corn cob discs, some more sticks, another chunk, chunk of corn cob, and yet another one. So, uh, yeah, you know, why don't we do that? I, I kind of like the idea of, I don't know why I was sort of thinking that it might be nice to take the stuff that was put into the feeding zone last time and sort of stir it up and man oh man do we have a good turnout over here where the feeding zone was applied I guess maybe that's the thing is if you return to your worm bin in only 10 days you're gonna encounter a big-time worm party <laughs> look at them all I'm sure they're not appreciating my uh, my barging in on their feasting and I do believe I see remnants of the food they got last time little bits of pumpkin and stuff like that some of the paper towel and napkins they got so let's check these little guys out for a moment and then we'll proceed I'm sure we'll also see some of the banana peel that was given to them last time pumpkin seems like an unlikely leftover to find but there it is a pretty good chunk of it I guess 10 days was not enough for them to do away with it despite the fact that the worms are definitely mobbing around this stuff and you know that was excavation of only half of the feeding zone so I'm thinking we're going to see a pretty good number of additional worms going further here's some banana peel I think each system got maybe two possibly three so we were pretty generous last time with the yummy foods and oops Every now and then I got to be um, a little bit more careful because I'm sort of like flailing around and I did just notice that I had um, sort of catapulted a, a little wormy over there. Before I forget, let me just go fetch the little guy. Well, I think he was in a pretty safe spot. He was amongst the um, materials that we removed from the top, the coverings and stuff like that. So I'm sure he would have been safe and found himself some sort of a comfortable spot to be and wouldn't have been in peril if we'd not gone to go retrieve the little guy but still I just wanted to play it safe I'm starting to wonder if the whole idea of blending stuff in here might be um, a bit much because I mean there is a lot of material in these bins perhaps more than I expected by just opening up the space in the middle into which we're gonna put today's feeding I feel like I've come almost to the rim here on both sides and I just don't want to risk accidentally sending more stuff over the edge so maybe instead of blending stuff together we'll just stick to the um, typical routine of just feeding the way we normally do so why don't we uh, proceed to seeing how over here in bin number one the feeding is progressing I would have to assume that it's going to be very similar to what we saw in bin number two People might be saying, well, why didn't you start in bin number one if you've got them numbered that way? <laughs> well, from your point of view, left to right does go from bin number one to two, but for me being on the opposite side over here, I just always, you know, kind of like reading left to right in the English language, I always sort of
gravitate towards, not always, but some, usually I gravitate towards the my left, which um, is usually the position that I put the higher number container into. So I don't think it's all that important. These are practically twin bins. Usually I go to some sort of extra effort to try to balance out the population estimates in the systems towards the end of populating them in the very beginning towards the end of the beginning <laughs> I think you get the idea but here oddly enough our estimates of the worm counts are not exact but they're very very close I think there's only a, a 10 worm difference it's thought that perhaps bin number one I believe has 10 more worms in it than bin number two or something like that so it always did seem like it would just be a matter of saying hey let's grab one two three four five worms move them over and then we can update the spreadsheet and then we would have technically twin bins here too but you know at this point we're talking about systems that are approaching 200 days of age and whatever worm count we started with has probably long changed over time so um, since we do have replacement feeding zone indicators here as you saw a moment ago I believe I am going to bring back the feeding zone indicators that we'd used previously and use them as supplemental bedding down in the feeding zone but um, I believe that those top covering newspapers that we had out on the systems are just going to stay in that role we're just going to um, put them back out across the top when we're done here and I've also got various little things here I've got little scraps of paper from when I was uh, crafting some top covering newspapers and some other systems and um, sort of like what we did last time we've got all this paper towel so here's a good test for a paper towel advertisement how well does it stand up to worm traffic for 10 days <laughs> so I do have um, I do have some soiled paper towels and napkins that we could also use as foundational bedding down here in the worm bins so why don't we get to putting this stuff to use and then we could pile in their yummy feeding and leave them in peace to continue their work for us Alrighty. okay I think we're pretty much at that point where we can begin piling in the food let's see what we got here let's try to be fair too let's Throw some of the strawberry over here, and I thought I saw some more strawberry down here. Yeah, perhaps not too much, and perhaps being fair is a tall order here when all this stuff is sort of just blended together and mixed in. Here too I had um, some yummy oranges that were starting to go bad, so I chopped them into little pieces and threw them into one of my worm food bags. So hopefully they like this stuff. Citrus is one of those things that a lot of worm farmers shy away from, thinking that there's citric acid, and that acid would do the worms um, some harm if they were to come into contact with it. I, um, I don't think that's really the case. Every time I ever feed citrus in my worm bins, it seems like the worms are more than happy to work the stuff down for me. So I think that's pretty much our feeding for today nice generous portion and you know before we start into putting in some of this coffee why don't we also return some of these food items and bedding bits that we encountered along the way I know we're bringing back worms with the food so that's why I put that newspaper down there so they don't have to come in direct contact with any of that frozen stuff that we just gave them. Man, that banana peel right there is pretty popular. <laughs> and you know, I don't know if it's too important to get every last bit of it, but it does seem like we managed to get the majority of it. Let's see what we can do as far as restoring some of the food we excavated from bin number one. Oh, I guess I was kind of all over the place with my excavation because I see that I positioned some of this banana peel over here near me. And over here perhaps we didn't have too much leftover pumpkin but here's some bedding and let's just take a quick glance to see if there's anything like that over here yep more banana peel 
more bedding bits but I don't think we have to go too crazy getting into the details here's a piece of pumpkin too let's get that back out back down in there and some of this bedding and then we can top off with the last little portion of today's meal which is coffee coffee is just one of those staple items that pretty much makes its way into almost all of my worm bin feedings and another thing that I'll often do is sprinkle in some of my my pulverized eggshell which is the grit that I use in my worm bins as well as some of this worm chow so that seems to me like a pretty nice feeding so let's do the same over here in bin number two and we'll bring back those coffee filters at the end to be our feeding zone indicators and I believe as part of covering up these feeding zones we'll use that as an excuse to bring in some material from the outer edges at the same time we'll have that opportunity to sort of see how this stuff is looking give it a little bit of an aeration stuff out here doesn't seem to have the moisture content of the middle of the bin the middle of the bin was where we we're putting you know all kinds of juicy stuff like pumpkin and whatever as part of the previous feeding not too surprising that the moisture level in the middle is a little bit higher than elsewhere in the bin part of the reason that I thought it might be beneficial to stir things around so some of the more damp stuff that had been down the middle near the feeding might be brought to the outer edges and vice versa bring some of the more dry material inboard but sometimes when the systems start nearing capacity it does become a little bit dicey to move material from here to there and still leave sufficient space to do work safely without the risk of spilling stuff all over the place so I think we've got ourselves a pretty nice level top surface here and we even did achieve a little bit of what I hoped to do which was to stir material around a bit so let's give the same treatment to bin number one and then we'll be pretty much done with today's check-in all these little tiny white specks that you see everywhere those are springtails and springtails have made themselves at home in some of my systems and a lot of people just say you know don't worry about it it's a good thing they're helpers they're helping to break down the material in your worm bin and I guess if they had always been there from day one then I would have been used to it by now but it's just sort of a recent development over the past few months the um, the appearance and the I guess spread of these little springtails in a couple of my systems has gotten me wondering you know hey what could I do to lessen their numbers and I've tried a few things but I've really had no success so I've to some degree become accepting of the fact that they're just a, a fact of life in some of my worm bins but if anyone has any tricks up their sleeves and they know how to reduce springtail numbers in your worm bins then if it's something I haven't tried before I'd be happy to give it a go please leave a comment and I think that's pretty much it for our check-in. So let's get these little guys covered back up and back up on the shelf over there. And then we'll be done. So let's see here. Perhaps we could use these feeding zone indicators to help return some of this material to the worm bins rather than me hauling it off to the sink and letting it go down the drain. All nice castings and valuable worm bin content that just remains in the worm bin is the better place for it to be if you ask me and back on the top coverings go yeah these top coverings seem to be holding up pretty good they're quite damp just from the recirculating moisture that goes around and around beneath the plastic top covering and eventually the worms will start taking a bite out of it but I don't see many signs of that happening yet the worms, I guess we managed to get some of the worms off, but not all of them. I can still see a couple worms that I missed. Part of the reason I like to fold the stuff over so that if there are any little wormies that I left behind, they're not going to be too 
frightened by the bright lights they're suddenly exposed to hopefully by keeping things kind of folded over the moisture remains the darkness remains and the worms stay put where I left them until I can get them all back into their bin shut the lights off and return them to a peaceful environment so that's it for our check-in with the European night crawlers everyone hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's very much appreciated as well all right everyone have a great day thanks for watching bye now